President Obama's Prague speech uh, is marvelous in being the most far-reaching speech about nuclear disarmament probably ever given by an American president, and in particular saying that Hiroshima and Nagasaki meant that America had a moral responsibility to lead on nuclear disarmament, which is a connection that has never been made uh, at the official level by an American president. And what we've seen since then, I think, has actually been quite substantial. There's a huge change of atmosphere with the Russians. There's a backing off on missile defense. And there's an effort, I think, before the Non-Proliferation Treaty Conference this May, to get a deal on reducing long-range missiles and to get the nuclear test ban through the American Senate. Now, these are both very complex issues that have to be cooked up behind the scenes and which you don't see until they're ready for serving. So one shouldn't complain too much if you don't see it, uh, as it were, all the cooking in public. But what one does need to see is a good deal of, you know, uh, applause and demand that uh, something come out of the kitchen, so to speak. There is, a, I think, a huge uh, re-education campaign to be done about the impact of uh, nuclear weapons, that there are uh, tens of thousands still in the world, that they can be fired at 45 minutes, and that one would see the destruction of life on Earth as a result. People talk about risks of proliferation with nuclear reactors, and they talk about two things. One, someone might make a bomb out of it, and the other, that some terrorists might do something nasty. Nobody says, what happens if you just have a good old-fashioned war around them? And if you have a good old-fashioned war around them, what you end up with is a huge amount of Chernobyl-like irradiated territory. And the fact that this isn't discussed is you know, a blind spot in the discussion bordering on psychosis. Well, wouldn't it be nice if we could scrap all the weapons in the world? Wouldn't that just be nice? And the cheerful thing is we know how to do it. It's a lot simpler than climate change. And if we do it as quickly as it was done at the end of the Cold War, we could do the whole job in about 10 years. And here's how we do it. The first thing, when it comes to weapons of mass destruction, what is the most effective thing that governments have ever done to get rid of weapons of mass destruction? Well, what do you know? It was the inspection regime on Saddam Hussein, remember him? Where there was something called UNRVIC. And UNRVIC was the inspection system for checking that Iraq got rid of all its weapons. And although Mr. Cheney and company said that UNRVIC was a, a woolly-minded, peaceniks um, uh, idea that could never do anything, actually UNRVIC was very, very effective and did indeed ensure that all Iraq's weapons of mass destruction had been got rid of, so that when the country was invaded, there weren't any left, because the UN had done its job. So, to deal with the weapons of mass destruction problem internationally, you take the process used by the UN on Iraq and you apply it to everybody. All the technical work has been done. At the time of Mrs. Thatcher and uh, Mr. Gorbachev and Bush Senior, there was an agreement reached in Europe to get rid of and to, or to manage all of the tanks and guns and warplanes and helicopters from the Atlantic to the Urals. And as a result, maybe 50,000 uh, of these weapons were literally chopped up and scrapped. So you can take this agreement along with Amovic and you can say, well, we should do this for the whole world. So there you are, you can do all of that and you can probably do it in five or 10 years because that was the pace it was done at the time before the Soviet Union collapsed and as part of the agreements that produced peace in Europe. Now, there are bits left over, space weapons, what do you do about uh, weapons on ships and the like, but basically that's the core of it. What we did for Iraq and what we did in Europe at the end of the Cold War, you spread that and you apply the same principles to uh, naval vessels and you include, uh, include uh, factories and um, sp uh, space weapons in the inspection system. And all of this is tried and tested uh, in Iraq, in Europe, it works, we could do it all very rapidly, but because disarmament is out of fashion and because even people, uh, former officials, perhaps don't quite want to carry this forward, rather like Thomas Aquinas and uh, 
and celibacy, Lord, make me celibate, but not quite yet. Um, well, here's how one can do the whole thing very, very rapidly. And I think the critical thing about the scrap proposal is that it's very simple for any citizen wanting to get involved with to say, well, we're interested in getting rid of weapons. Here's how we do it. And this is how we want to end up. And we can start off with uh, confidence building measures so everybody can go and fly over other people's countries and you can go and do inspections and these sorts of things and work up to the slightly tougher job. But the beauty of it is you say, we're going to do the whole lot. So you can't have anyone say, well, agree to this bit and then we'll wiggle, wiggle out over here and build something new. You take the whole lot on. And taking the whole lot on sounds totally and completely implausible until you understand that we've done it all already.